action. Okay. Uh, I, I, first of all, I want to apologize for possible mistakes. I bought myself a graphic terminal and I want to use it during this talk. So it is first time that I will be writing something on, on, on transparency. So I am a bit, uh, uh, not, I'm not sure how it will work. Uh, then my talk will be mainly the introduction. I think that introduction is the most important here. And if I will have time, I am going to say something about our results. Uh, so uh, the story started in 2016 in laboratory in Stuttgart, where a group of Professor Tim and Fry were experimenting with dysprosium, very cold uh, dysprosium atoms, preservation condensate of dysprosium atoms. Dysprosium atoms are characterized by large magnetic moment. Uh, the, uh, this is the element which has the largest magnetic moments of all elements. Uh, so the experiment uh, was performed in this way that they had the dysprosium uh, condensate in such uh, atomic trap, which is uh, the atoms are held by external laser light, and then they were playing with interactions between the atoms. In a moment, it will be I will tell more how to play with these interactions. In fact, they were uh, decreasing the uh, repulsive interaction in the system, and they expected that everything will collapse at some moment. Will tend to the system with infinite, with very large uh, density, and, and and it will be destroyed. To their uh, surprise, they observed the system at some moment there is a kind of instability and the system splits into separate uh, say droplets as you see here in this in this uh, picture uh, and it was really very unexpected and uh, the whole community was speculating how come that that these droplets are formed what is what is the mechanism of keeping the droplets together uh, and, and and also uh, it, it was sh 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 shown that the droplets don't need any external trap, they are self-bound, they, they need only some magnetic field gradients to compensate for gravity and they, 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 they are free and they can move. So, so nobody knew what is the mechanism, it was a lot of speculations, however, uh, as it occurred later, the mechanism was described in 2015 by, by Dima Petrov, uh, but it was not noticed immediately that the solution to, to this puzzle is known. Uh, so to, to solve the puzzle, how come that this gas uh, can be self-bound and can form a liquid droplet, I will start with explaining some major features of, of Bose-Einstein condensate. Bose-Einstein condensate, it is a system, sorry, it doesn't want to, Okay, so now it goes. Bose Einstein condensate, this is the picture from, from above or of the same system, but Bose Einstein uh, condensate it is a state of matter where we have the atomic, uh, uh, well, I'm talking about at atomic Bose Einstein condensate. So we have atoms, and all these atoms share the same wave function. So, first of all, Bose Einstein condensate is very dilute, the densities are about 10 to 12, up to 10 to 15 at most atom per cubic centimeter, so it's extremely cold. The temperatures are below nanokelvin nano range. So why it is so? The first question that I want to answer is why the condensate has to be so cold? Uh, and, and in order to explain why it has to be so cold, and, and here is the, the answer is that because it, it is so dilute. Uh, and the critical temperature for both Einstein condensation is, uh, as, as, as we, you see, proportional in, in the uniform system to density to power one over, uh, to density to power two over three, uh, which means that it is something like one over distance square. So the, the, the larger the distance between the atom, the, the smaller the, the temperature. So the question is, so why one has to keep this condensate so dilute? Why, why don't go to, to normal densities of, of, of gas like, like we have uh, in, in everyday day life? And to explain this, we have to go to the picture uh, to, to tell something about interactions. And, and we know, this is this picture at the bottom, that that, that everything freezes. So normal such atoms interact via Van der Waals potential, which looks like this, and characteristic distance 
it is zero between the atoms of the order 10 to minus 10 meters, so it is of the order of a few angstroms. Uh, then, uh, if the atoms would be very cold at that distance, they would form molecules. So, what, what is really very dangerous for the condensate is that freezing, freezing the, uh, the gas to such low temperature, we know that everything except of liquid helium freezes, forms the, the solid state. So, so there are such three body processes where two atoms will, will, will be somewhere at, at, at this distance located forming a bound state and then of course the third atom is needed because because the energy becomes negative so some somebody has to carry this energy out so if three atoms are together uh, such formation of such such cold molecules and then this process uh, proceeds is is possible and we will not have gas uh, at all so no way of thinking about uh, sharing the same wave function by uh, by, by, by all atoms. So the, the three body losses have to be avoided. That's why we have to go to extremely low densities to avoid such situations where three atoms will meet together. Uh, in all situations, this, the three body losses are really something which limits the lifetime of the condensate, that the lifetime of the condensate is about, I don't know, 100 milliseconds up to seconds. And so uh, in this way, when, when we look the temperatures are extremely low, so the brain wavelength is extremely large. So when we look at the at this at this the brain potential from the point of view, and we try to put on the same scale uh, the potential and and also the the wave function uh, of the condensate, then we see that this wave function. Is of the order of the Broglie wavelengths, which which is the Broly, which is of the order of 100 micrometers, so so it is 10 to minus four. So so this this one device interaction is extremely short range when one looks at this interaction potential from the point of view of atoms. The wave function of atoms is spread over I don't know something like five or up to six orders of magnitude. Uh, larger uh, than than uh, uh, the range of the Van der Waals interaction. So, uh, if it is so, uh, the interaction can be described approximately by a short range potential. We the atom does not see the the the, the structure of this uh, potential uh, from the point of 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 the wave function of atom. The the potential can be uh, approximated by zero range by zero range potential and then I will write here the the, the proportionality factor. Uh, so uh, in order to, uh, to to find the proportionality factor one has to think about scattering of such cold atoms. If, if such cold atoms the, the only process in fact that, that, that is important is the scattering. Uh, and uh, when two atoms collide with each, with each other, the scattering cross section is proportional or it is some depends on the relative momentum. And then this cross section is depends on the tail of the interaction potential. However, for this Van der Waals potential, it's case something like 2 to power L, where L is relative angular momentum. It means that only L equals zero. If k goes to zero, because we, we are at the limit of zero relative energy, only L equals zero is important. So this is S wave scattering. Uh, sorry, this is my experiment with this terminal. S wave scattering, it means that when the atoms are going head to head, gives some contribution to the interaction. So such such scattering cross section for S wave scattering is given by the S wave scattering lengths. And this is the crucial parameter, the only parameter which determines the interaction between the atoms. So in fact, uh, one has approximate the interaction of cold atoms in, in the regime of zero, zero relative energy by something which is, uh, sorry, it is 
h by square over 2m. And is it unitary limit? Yeah. This is not unitary limit. Unitary limit, will, I, I will tell a bit uh, later, then, then there is no, um, then there is also only one parameter, but this is the limit when the scattering lengths go to infinity. So, so th this is h bar square over n scattering lengths and, and delta potential. So this is, uh, 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 coming back to the question about unitary limit, I will say something when I will be talking about manipulating of the scattering length. So I will I will tell it a bit, a, a bit later. So if we have such short rate potential, then, then the energy of the system in the mean field approximation can be described n over 2, and then it will be this g, the g parameter, which is interaction strength, which depends only on the s wave scattering length. And then we have, we have here standard form, which is, this is prime. This is probably the more complicated equation that I am going to write down. And this is this should be star psi r prime psi r. And if we assume that this is delta potential, mm, sorry, this G shouldn't be here. Delta r minus i prime. We can easily evaluate this this integral, and we will get something like psi r square psi r square which is uh, when i write which is nothing else like one half g uh, i made a mistake it should be and square here and it should be density square so in the mean field approximation the the interaction in the system uh, depends only on the density of of, of, uh, of the gas and, and it takes this form. So this makes theoretical life very easy uh, because uh, it leads to a simple description in terms of only one parameter. Now the question of Professor Dilt I will try to answer, <clears throat> the scattering lens has, can be manipulated in experiments, can be tuned. And uh, to give briefly the idea how one can tune the interaction between atoms, I will come back to this uh, Van der Waals potential, and then we have some atoms which are, this is in the center of mass frame, then these two atoms scatter, and they, this, this relative energy of these two atoms is almost zero. That are, they are the dissociation edge in this open channel. This channel is called open. But everybody who, who works in atomic physics and mo with molecules knows that there are plenty of different possibilities of interaction of this molecular potential depending on some internal configuration. Uh, so I will change the color, which will be another challenge. Uh, so this initial two atoms, uh, they have projection in different molecular channels. In this channel, they, 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 they have positive energy, but, but if there is such another molecular potential nearby uh, for which the dissociation energy is larger, uh, then it is possible that these two potentials, the relative energy can be tuned because they correspond to different magnetic moments in these two channels. So these are two possible interaction potentials between the atoms. The one is open, the other is closed, and magnetic field can shift these potentials with respect to each other. And if it happens so, then there is the down state in this potential, which is at the energy equals zero, then we have such collision when the energy of incident atom is resonantly coupled to some down state of the system. And then uh, in, in this, uh, Case the scattering, uh, the cross section for scattering is huge. Uh, evidently, there is some, I don't know, transient molecule can be formed, so it which gives a large contribution to, to the scattering uh, cross section. Uh, and then the scattering lengths, 
varies by orders of magnitude. And here to, to, to the right, I, I, I have the scattering length A at the proximity to this magnetic field B0, because this is the field which tunes this to, uh, to molecular potential with respect to each other. And there is some value which is resonant for which this, 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 this red uh, energy level crosses the dissociation uh, at, uh, in this open channel, uh, and then we have possibility that the interaction, that the scattering length can go from minus to plus infinity and even cross zero, so non-interacting. Maybe I, I, I wrote it in such a way that, that it, it is not obvious, but it is possible. So, so we have such, such dependence. So uh, the unitarity limit is the limit when the scattering length is huge and uh, 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 and then we have some universal property of the system because uh, here we can have huge molecule which is formed and the only parameter which determines everything is just uh, the this scattering length square so so the characteristic energy is h bar over M a square, and and then we have some some universal behavior for fermions or for bosons. So it is short mentioning of what is this unitarity limit, and I think that maybe this is a good moment when I stop about when I stop talking about interactions to ask questions if, if you have any. If, if I don't see, I will continue. So summarizing this energy density of ultra cold. Uh, gas, atomic gas, uh, is uh, proportional to this density square, and we see that on average, the gas in this description can be either repulsive or attraction, because when G is positive, then we see that the lowest density, the smallest energy. So it means that the gas would tend to have the smallest density possible, so it means it is expanding. It has to be kept in a box, an external potential to prevent further expansion. So this is G positive. In the opposite limit, when G is negative, it means that effectively we have attraction because we see from this energy formula that the gas will minimize the energy by maximizing its density. So typically attractive condensates are not stable. They are unstable because they tend to attract. However, if we have condensate in, in, a, in a trap, then it must be zero somewhere at the edges. It cannot be uniform everywhere. So it means that there is no, no vanishing kinetic energy related to this curvature of the wave function. And this kinetic energy it's equivalent to some pressure which can stabilize the system if the system is not too large. So what is important here to, to, to notice is that in the mean field approximation, even if Van der Waals potential, which describes interaction between atoms, has both a repulsive and attractive part, the, the, the mean field interaction has only one, one sign. It can be either repulsive or attractive. So the uh, description of such system is then simple because we have Schrodinger equation and, and here as the interaction uh, potential, we, we, we have to, to, to add this derivative of, of, of energy with respect to density, which leads to the potential which, which depending on the density of atoms, which is wave function square, and, and therefore uh, so it is, uh, this is called uh, gross pitalisky equation, and this is really a working uh, horse of the theory for many, many years. This mean field description and many features of both Einstein condensate was described uh, by this gross pitalisky equation. It can be also written in dynamical form when this chemical potential mu is substituted by the time derivative. So, so that's more or less the basic of, of Bose-Einstein condensate about the theory of, of the system. And now I will come to, to a bit closer to what I started. Uh, I want to, to explain the, the droplets. And uh, 
To this end, we have to consider mixtures. Let us consider that we have two Bose-Einstein condensates or two kinds of atoms. Uh, it can be, for instance, potassium uh, 39 in different hyperfine states. It, it can be mixture of potassium rubidium, whatever. People are working on, on such mixtures. So when we have such two component Bose Einstein condensate, two component means mixture of two different species, then the energy, of course, will be sum of these two components. We will have mean field energy of the first component mean field energy to the energy density, in fact, of the second component. And eventually, so we have the interaction energy. So we have N1 and N2. And all these energies are described by corresponding scattering lengths between in, in the first component, in the second component, and this is interspecies interaction. And then, in, in, if we have such such system, uh, we can study stability. So I will write down once more the, the, the same functional in the matrix form. Here we have this diagonal G1 and G2, and we, we have interspecies interaction here. And to, to, to what is important is the determinant of this matrix, which is equal to G1. Oh, oh, sorry, what happens to the I am afraid that something is disconnected let me check uh, yes one cable was disconnected no now now i am safe so we have sorry for this technical issue so uh, the determinant of this matrix is obviously g12 square and some of this determinant tells us about possible phases of the system. If, if G12 is small, it means interspecies inter interaction is small. So we have situation G1, G2 is much larger than G12 squared. Then in the zero approximation, that's as in forget about interaction between the species. So it means they don't see each other in this is case when they mix. So this is missable. The, the, the gases are both can mix. Then we can consider opposite situation that interspecies interaction is larger than the interest product of this intraspecies interaction. And then again, we have two possibilities. First of all, if G12, because he, here we have G12 squared, G12 can be positive or negative. We know that positive means repulsive, uh, repulsion. So if G12 is positive, then it means repulsion. Interspecies in, uh, repulsion dominates, and we have separation of these two components. Or we have we can have different situation where, where G12 sorry, is negative. It means Interspecies interaction is attractive. If this attraction dominates this, this G12 term, then we expect the collapse of the system because, because we have very strong attract, attraction. So th this is the stability diagram. And we can recover here slowly the situation that is similar to what Tim Manfau had an experiment. He was trying to study the system, playing with flashback resonances. He was decreasing this short uh, range repulsion between uh, these plasma atoms, and he expected something like collapse. Such collapse was expect was observed in the 90s by by for, for different for, for rubidium, and it was very famous at the time paper that like like Bosanova explosion. So instead of, of, of showing this collapse, he found uh, uh, the formation of this droplet. Uh, and, and the modernness of formation of this droplet was uh, predicted by Dima Petrov from Paris one year before the experiment. It was in 2015, but the problem was that Dima Petrov was studying the mixture because he wanted to have attraction and repulsion simultaneously, and he was studying the mixture. I, just uh, rewrote from his 
paper the energy for this mini field energy, which is exactly the same what I, what I presented here, but this is this matrix two by, by two, which is diagonalized. And we have here this type, which typically is large. And then we have this, this, this small contribution, which is this, this difference between, I wrote explicitly that we are interested in G12 negative because we want to have interspecies uh, attraction. So that's why I put the sign here to, to, to be sure, to, to make it obvious that this is attraction. And, and then he was considered the situation when this mean field energy was very close to zero. It was practically zero. Then we have this collapsing system. We, we should expect that system is, is collapsing uh, because we have this very small uh, term which is responsible for, for, for attraction. And then he found a mechanism which could stabilize this collapse. And what is the mechanism? And, and here we, we have to come back to very old theory of liquid helium when, when this short range potential was considered or zero range potential was considered as, as some theoretical tool to describe interaction on, on liquid helium. And, and what I presented uh, at the very beginning, so it means this, this one, two, G, N square energy is the leading term. Of course, there are corrections. And then this next leading orbital tail was found by, by, by Li Huang and Yang. And this term right now is called Li Huang Yang collection. And, and, and this Li Huang Yang collection is the second term, which needs some sophisticated theoretical calculations, regularization whatsoever. But, but then there is, this term is also in the system. Nobody ever before considered this term because, because density times scattering length to power three is small parameter for Bose-Einstein condensate. It is much, much less than one. So this term is never important and, and, and it's not possible to see is, uh, is importance in experiment. It, as compared to this one, which is here, it could be neglected. However, Dima Petrov predicted situation, or oh, yeah, I will come back here. What if we have situation when the moon field vanishes? If the moon field energy vanishes, then evidently higher order terms come into play. And that was the situation when the system is at the edge of collapse. The interspecies attraction compensates for intraspecies repulsion, mean fields cancels, and then what is next? Next is this Li Huang Yang term, and this term comes from the energy of zero point oscillations of Bogolubov excitation. When one tries to diagonalize the interaction Hamiltonian, there, is, there, are, there are some excitations, there is quantum depletion, so there are some, some particles occupying this excited mode, and the zero point energy, I will tell you an analogy for harmonic oscillator. The energy is equal to H, sorry, H bar omega N plus one half, and this one half is zero point energy. So this is some of this one half in quotation mark for all uh, excited modes of Bose-Einstein condensates, which, which can be brought to this term. Uh, so, this is very unusual situation where tiny small corrections typically neglected become very important. So when an analysis of Petrov, we add this Li Huang Yang term, which has this form, this first limited energy is almost zero. This correction, this is called a hard mode, and the only term which is not vanishing is the soft and it's soft mode, which is proportional to delta G, which is small and negative, then this small term can be compensated by this quantum fluctuations of the global vacuum, and then it can lead to stabilization of the system. So in this graph here below, I plotted this, these two terms, and this red line shows the direction of hard excitation. This is hard mode, so it costs a lot of energy. Uh, 
and and this mode is unstable this, around this blue line we have this instability which is slightly negative so in this figure if i go around this blue line this energy would be like this but this is small and then we are adding this new yang correction and then it is like that some small minimum forms and then it is possible to stabilization of the droplet however i want to say that but that this is not the minimum which is the equilibrium solution, but quite close. So first of all, from this assumption about the uh, vanishing of mean field energy, we can find the density ratio of this. So when we set this to zero, the density ratio is G to two divided by G11. So there is some magic density ratio for which the system can be stabilized and for the stability analysis to finding this this energy one can find that there are some two well described values of densities for which the system is stable so this is the droplet they have fixed density like a real liquid and we will see that adding atoms will not change this density that only the radius of the droplet will grow so so this way Dimitri Petrov uh, somehow predicted existence of self bound liquid droplets these liquid droplets have the city have densities of this condensate that they are formed of so this is still they are at the edge of stability so it's rather close to 10 15 atoms per centimeter cube but it is still by eight orders of magnitude roughly less than liquid helium. So we have the most dilute liquid, or eight orders of magnitude more dilute than, 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 than liquid helium, which is not compressible. But so in fact, it is like gas, but it does not take the shape of the container as gas would do. But it is very colored and, and it is kept by quantum fluctuations. So it was the first time when quantum fluctuation in such system were brought to such magnitude that they can be observed in experiment. Now I will tell you what it has to do with the experiment of Tilman Fau, who was studying these prism atoms. They were, it was not mixture at all. But he had this, this prism atoms, which has large magnetic moments, large on atomic scale, and magnetic interactions, they are both positive and attractive, it depends on the relative uh, orientation of these dipoles. If they are, if they, if, if they are in the position head to head and tail to tail, then we have repulsion. But if they are in the position head to tail, so north and south poles directed to each other, then there is attraction. So because there are these two kinds of interactions, and there is also this short range, short range repulsion, playing with this. G, which is this short, sorry, short, short, short range uh, strength of the potential, one can make the system in exactly the situation when infinite energy vanishes. And then there are exactly the same, but for bipolar gas quantum fluctuations, uh, whose energy stabilizes the system. So uh, this is the mechanism of formation of stabilization of these droplets. This is again the same experiment, and I think that uh, this is this is the the good point to ask questions because now I will come to something which are our results. Uh, I still have some time, so if you have any questions to this part, please interrupt me or please ask them now. Okay. So if not, I I, I will continue and I come back to this. Realization of Dima Petros scenario. It was something like three years later. Uh, it was the experiment of Leticia Tarrell group at ICFO, and they were studying two component potassium. The potassium was in two different uh, superfine uh, states. So one was with uh, magnetic uh, quantum number minus one, the other was with zero. And here I, I show the dependence of scattering lengths as a function of magnetic field. And then we see that there is such convenient range here because 
because this 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 blue line is corresponds to to interaction of one component which is f m f equals zero this one which is constant at this value of magnetic field which is the second component with with, with m f equal minus one and this is interspecies attraction which is somewhere close to the feedback resonance because it changes rapidly from minus 100 per lady to, to almost 200. And, and we see that in this regime, both uh, A down down and A up up are positive. This is larger than zero. But here we have the range where this interspecies interaction is negative. Uh, it, 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 sorry. This was not right. This is here is negative, and then the delta G, which is proportional to the delta A, can be here negative and here can be positive. So this is the convenient regime where delta A is negative to, to form this, this droplets. And really, when we look at the experiment, we see three different situations where this uh, effective mean field interaction is repulsive. We see when the gas was uh, released from the trap, it, it expands. We see that the, the size of the cloud grows. Uh, this is a regime where this effective delta A is, is, is negative and is small and cannot be stopped by, by this small Li Huang Yang term and we have collapse. And then this is this liquid. We see that size of the droplet does not change for 17 up to 20 milliseconds significantly. So this is a signature of formation of, of liquid droplets. As you see, the lifetime is limited. It is here about 20 milliseconds. And there is the major problem with, with there is serious drawbacks of uh, both, uh, both uh, droplets and mixtures. In mixtures, at least in the mixtures that have been produced so far, the lifetime is short, which uh, which which is not very convenient for doing something with this droplet. So now I will tell how how we describe this these droplets. We have two Schrodinger equations which are coupled because this this energy density depends both on n one and n two. So. So we, we have set of two equations, and, and, and if we look for the ground state solution, it looks like this. It has really a top, uh, a flat top, and then density goes to zero. If we add atoms, the picture, sorry, the picture will, will change like this. So the droplet will have the same density, but it, its size uh, will, will grow. Take the blue one, and this this is, will also grow. So we see that that they are almost not compressible. They will be uncompressible in the thermodynamic limit. Uh, small droplets look like more Gaussian functions. So so but but large droplets have flat top. They are uncompressible, and and it fits very well to the, to the Dima Petrov theory. So now we have understanding of, of, of this mechanism. Now, now uh, okay, it's very nice. The droplets are kept together by quantum fluctuations, but if we think a, a bit deeper, everything what is bound it is, is, is kept by quantum mechanical effects. So it's nothing surprising that there are some quantum effects which which makes this uh, droplet uh, being a stable uh, object uh, we might ask the question so what is really quantum and what is quantum in my opinion is the fact that there are droplets in both of the mixtures are made of superfluids these both Einstein condensate atomic is superfluid and we have mixture of two superfluids and these are these two superfluids which form a droplet so so what is really important about droplet is that this is not only density which describes them but there are also some phases and then there is a question whether we can see some dependence on the phases 
uh, of this quantum droplet. This would be really a manifestation of, of some quantum features of the droplets. And, and then one can think about collisions of such two objects. Uh, collisions of two objects, of two droplets, were studied by a group of uh, Giovanni Modugno in Pisa and uh, Florence. Uh, and this is the picture from this experiment, but they were forming the droplets uh, in a trap where they shine some vertical light in order to produce such barrier here, we split the, the condensates into two, two, two species, the droplets is being split, and then when this light is taken off, uh, is switched off, then, then we have two droplets which are separated, they are on the heel of some binding potential, so they go towards each other, they scatter, and the main result was that there are two scenarios, either they merge or they they do not merge and, and they and they they, they 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 scatter and they go as two droplets again and then they found that this merging or separation depends on relative density the relative velocity and they have found that this relative velocity depends somehow on the size of the droplet okay it was very nice experiment however the phases were the same so uh, we decided to study such collisions, but taking into account that one might manipulate the phases of these two superfluids in one droplet with respect to the phases of these two superfluids in another droplet. So that was work I have to, to acknowledge sponsors and they were from several papers. On this, I think that the paper that I am going to talk uh, right now is about, about collisions, which is this one. Uh, and I have to, to acknowledge my collaborators. The, the, the main uh, working power was, was, was Sir, Sir Maciej Pulak, who did all numerical calculations. Also, Philip Gamper, my, my PhD student, was involved, and pa Pavel Zim, who, who did a lot in other papers that I mentioned on theory of, of, of droplets and the interaction in lower dimensions. And with Martin Prodin, who came with very nice idea of description of droplets in terms of some, say, reduced Newton equation that I will be talking soon. So here I want to show a few examples of dynamics. Uh, I have to go to this. These are droplets, and there is no any phase difference. They are the same. They have zero velocity, however, they start to go towards each other, and finally they merge. Uh, then we, we have two components in one droplet and two components in the second droplet. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have to switch again to... Uh, but we assume that these two components, the phases are identical, so we have phase to the left and face to the left of component one and two. And we have the second droplet, which have face right and face right. We, we could consider totally different phases, but, but there are too many parameters. So now we have phase difference of first and the second component to be the same between left and right, equal to pi over four. And now let as observe uh, the collision. The droplet starts slowly, they, 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 they move, you don't see it, but they move, they move, they will accelerate soon, and then they will collide. Yes, they, they, they collide, and you see that the left one becomes large, the right one becomes small, uh, but they are excited, they oscillate, and eventually the left one, the big one, swallows the small one and forms the one, one big droplet. And now I will come to a bit smaller droplets and slightly different phase, the phase difference. This is pi over 10. Let us look at the scenario of this droplet. They start to move slowly. The dynamics is very slow at the very beginning. But, but something interesting should happen at the end. They still go, believe me, they go. 
Yes, they approach each other. They approach, they approach. They are quite, quite close. And the right one becomes smaller. Mm -mm. Something happened, okay. I will not repeat it. The right one became smaller and finally it should be something interesting which I show in different movie. Sorry, uh, this is, these are papers. So, such, we have plenty of such beautiful movies, but then the conclusion that I could give looking at these movies would be, look how rich the area of collisions is. Sometimes it goes like this, sometimes like that. This is not a very scientific explanation. We would like to have some understanding of these collisions, why it happens, and sometimes they emerge, sometimes they approach, sometimes they repeal. Uh, in order to do this, I have to do some, I have to make some theoretical introduction uh, because I want to introduce simplified model, not this coupled cross Pitayevsky equation and solution is crunching of huge numbers. So let us come back to this uh, interaction energy functional together with this Li Huang Yang term. And let us assume that there are several symmetries which are broken, continuous symmetries which are broken when droplets is formed. First is translational symmetry. When we, uh -huh, I have to switch this, this one. First, when we shift the position of the droplet. Nothing depends here on the position, not only on density, because we don't have any external potential. So when you observe the droplet, it is nothing very special. It's like in classical mechanics, when we have uniform space, we can put our body whenever we want. But then there are also two U1 symmetries, which are related to the phases of two components of the droplet. Now I consider one, one droplet only. So we have two wave functions, and these two wave functions are complex. So we can multiply one of them by some phase, and the second one by some another phase. Densities depend on modulus square, so phase don't play any role here. Therefore, when, however, when we have one particular droplet formed in the experiment, there is some phase which the wave function picks up during the formation of the droplet. So in every single realization, there is some phase, but it will be different from realization to realization. So on average, there is no phase, but in single realization, there is some phase, and there is the mechanism of spontaneous symmetry breaking, which is responsible for these phases. And then we know that when we have, when we have broken symmetries, continuous broken symmetries, that there are some excitations which recover the symmetries. So these are called Goldstone modes. And one excitation that recovers the translational symmetry is just moving particle to another position. If we do it with zero velocity, then it does not cost energy. Uh, the same is with, with, with the phases. Moving the phases, shifting the phases, also does not cost any energy. So I, I want to introduce some Hamiltonians of this, which describe those excitations which corresponds to Goldstone and Higgs mode, because with this uh, Higgs mode, there are also Goldstone modes. I will show it in an example soon. But now I will briefly say that these droplets in 1D, this is nothing else, like realization of the famous super or elusive super solid phase. That was done the experiment by Tillman Fall. It was in this dipolar droplets, one component droplets. So here I show this Mexican head potential. So means that the energy does not depend on the phase, which can change around this minimum. However, there are other excitations which are excitation perpendicular to this the direction of the phase, which is amplitude of, of, of the wave function, and this is Goldstone mode, changing of amplitude costs some energy, but changing of amplitude somehow powers the dynamics of the phase. These are coupled variables like, like, like position and momentum. 
the position it is over here and and if we do it with zero velocity it does not cost any energy then in order to have this dynamics we have to have the hamiltonian which is something like this then of course x dot will be one over m px so this this higgs mode gives uh, gives some energy gives leads to dynamics of, of this uh, of this goldstone node and this is experiment from 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 Tillman Fall group that they led to some instability in this dipolar uh, dispersion class in 1d and then it splits into several droplets these droplets overlap overlap they are superfluid so they, they show that there is this Higgs and goldstone mode uh, that there are in phase and out of phase oscillations. So, this is very spectacular uh, formation of super solid phase, the phase which is which has density modulation, which is characteristic for solid, but has also uh, another long range order, which is this of diagonal order, which has some global phase. So, this is something which is simultaneous with solid and uh, superfluid. But come back to, to, to the problem of two of bezel bezel droplets. I, I gave already the analogy between this this translational symmetry in Z. Then, then, then there is this Hamiltonian which creates the dynamics of Z. So these are just two coupled variables, and we have position of the droplet, we have momentum of the droplet, and the Hamiltonian should look like this. And by analogy, but we proved it exactly in some other paper. When we have the phase shift of the wave function, with this phase shift delta is small, we can expand it, expand it up to linear terms, and we can check what is the change of the total number of, of atoms. We see that it, it, it leads to some changes of delta n, and here I want to say that this delta theta and delta n play a role of these conjugated variables like z and momentum, you see, they are coupled and the dynamics is, is coupled. And then when we look at the energy of, of, of the system, which has slightly different number of atoms, the phase does not change the energy, but 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 changing the phase, changing number of atoms, and this change of number of atoms leads to subquadratic Hamiltonian, and we see that this small variation of number of particles plays a role of the momentum. And then we can write the Newton equations of motion by analogy. I will do it. That the theta dot is this one over m theta. This m theta is some parameter which shows the inertia, which describes the measures the inertia of, 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 of the phase with respect to the variation of number of particles. It can be this parameter depends only on chemical potentials, so only interaction strength and can be found uh, exactly. So this equation of motion is like this, and then we have another equation of motion, which is zero because we have no, no any external potential. So now I want to describe the collision of these two droplets in terms of such parameters like the difference. We see that what happens, we have some phase difference, so we, which is the, the delta theta between the right and left, and we have some flow of atoms from one droplet to other, which is delta n. And then instead of solving this coupled nonlinear partial differential equations, I would, I would like to write down such, such coupled equations for the phase difference between droplets and for the current which flows between these two droplets to describe the collision. So this is my goal. Uh, and to this end, I have one one piece missing is just the interaction energy. And one can find that the interaction energy by having these two droplets, they have this terms, which is exponential, and they are far away, the states overlap, and we can compare the energy of the wave function, which is sum of this left and right wave function, minus energy of left. If the, the if this is not present, plus energy of right, if this is not present. So this difference is uh, we see is like you cover potential, but it also depends on difference between the phases of left and right droplet. It depends on the cosine of the phase differences between left and right droplets. Therefore, when we have this, 
we can write down the equation of motion. No, we have some external potential. This is this energy of two droplets, and this energy of two droplets depends on the overlap or on the distance and the, on the relative phases. So, so this one, because I remind you that u was something like e to minus z times some lambda divided by z cosine phi delta phi. So this term is derivative with respect to z. So with minus, which is pro probably lambda e to minus z lambda over z over z, sorry, plus z squared, probably which is smaller cosine theta. And this is nothing else like the current which flows. Uh, and this is derivative with respect to z. Uh, sorry, this is this is a bit of a mistake. I will correct it right now. I have uh -huh. doesn't doesn't want to go. Sorry, doesn't want to go. Also, I will come back here. So this is derivative with respect to the end of the phase, the, the theta. So uh, Right, so it is phi. So derivative. So this term is proportional to e to minus z lambda over z. My sine phi. So there is some flow of atoms which is proportional to the sine of the phase. It probably reminds you something, something like Josephson effect. And this is the, the way I, I want to describe. This is the the. Uh, collision of the droplets. So now I, I present the equations in full glory for two components. There are two phases, delta phi one and delta phi two. Uh, this is the same, this is relative momentum only, which is derivative of, of potential with respect to the distance. And then here we have the super flu, super current, uh, super current, which is derivative of the number of atoms which goes from the right, right to the left and that evidently everything which goes from right droplets arrives to the left droplet so that's why we have this minus sign and this is proportional to sine theta and then we have the equations for theta which say that the, for the relative phases that, that this is chemical potential difference and difference of number of atoms between left and right droplets, and this is derivative of chemical potential with respect to. Okay, this is not important. This is some something which looks like this. This I would call uh, two component Josephson junction. Junction, however, this these junctions are moving towards each other or with respect to each other with some momentum p capital and the, the distance r changes so it means that the coupling is also a function of time between these two junctions and now i show the uh, sub collisions movies and i will show solutions of these of these equations uh, and i will show that they agree sorry mm -mm. Something does not agree. Uh, once more, sorry. I have to, yes. So I have collision of droplets with small phase difference. And, and you see, this is really extremely strange. One is moving toward the other. And out of a sudden, the right one is decreasing vanishes eventually and the droplets start somehow to repeat because the left droplets goes back so this is one possible scenario for some phases which were i guess 18 degrees uh, and at this this is maybe i will show more movies okay no i have this so now there are two possible scenarios uh, we let us think about this collision in terms of Josephson junction. We have the phase difference, and uh, and if we have constant phase difference, then the force is cosine delta theta delta phi, which is fixed, and this is attractive or repulsive depending on 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 this phase difference. I always start with something which is attractive because I start with relative velocity equals zero, because when it is repulsive, they will go away. So I want to have some droplets which uh, uh, which will 
go towards each other. So there's absolute action with growing coupling. And then delta in number of particles varies in time. This delta, delta, delta n over dt is, pro, is this proportional to sine omega t. So, so we have some alternating current between these two droplets, which we which go like this. So we have. Sorry, I don't see. It. Oh, sorry, we sorry. Should, we sorry. We should be, uh, yes, we should be finishing soon. Okay, so. I will, I will accelerate, but I will tell you uh, the idea without, without maybe this, uh, uh, this equation, but this is, we have two possible scenarios for Jacobson junction. Either we have a constant voltage. Uh, so, so this is, I said something about it. This is AC Josephson effect. When we have some cost, constant voltage, it means the droplets are of different size. The number of atoms, difference of number of atoms plays a role of the droplets. Then the phase goes in time linearly, and then and then the, the, the potential. So this is the second, the first scenario. Sorry, the first scenario. In this. This is the first. This is DC and this. Okay, I will start with this. I have it. The first scenario is the phase difference constant. Then we have the constant force. The droplets accelerate, and we have flow of atom which is oscillating. This, 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 and we have direct current. The atoms go in one direction, which is determined by the phase gradient. This what is at the very beginning of the collection. We start with equal droplets. We have some current flowing, which is very small, so we don't see any change of the size of the droplet. However, when sorry, but I had problems. I cannot switch it for some reasons to another, and that makes me nervous. Oh, I don't know why I cannot go to another slide. Okay, now I can. So, and then there is a second scenario. If the drop, if these atoms go from one droplet to the other, or if we start with droplets which are not equal, then the potential difference somehow uh, is being formed, which is difference of chemical potentials. In such a case, from this equation that I just wrote a few minutes ago, one can check that that phi grows linearly, then the force, which is the potential, oscillates. When we average over these fast oscillations, we will, this is something like capita effect, we will get some effective pandemotive potential, which is repulsive. So originally attractive motion, but due to the creation of the potential difference, or the number of particles difference between the droplets, which cause the phase to rapidly uh, grow in time, Fast oscillations of the potential average over these oscillations gives repulsive force, and then we have we have current which oscillates in time. So we have atoms flowing from one droplet to the other. Okay, and here it is it is it is the scenario of this AC Josephson effect. We have larger droplet which is here at the at the bottom. Uh, and smaller droplets, the black line is the solution of this Josephson junction equation, this Newton like equation, which shows the tra trajectory of the droplet. And we see that they started to approach each other, which is maybe not visible here. But then to the right, we see, uh, we see this black line, which is oscillation of atom number between droplets, and this red line shows the phase with growth linear load time, which is omega times t, and then we see that this fast oscillation produces the ponderomotive potential, which is repulsive and make droplets to repeal each other. So this is the scenario, and, and, and what I can say, if the droplet is much smaller than this flow of atoms, which is at the beginning, this dc Josephson effect, might make the droplet so small that it evaporates because there is some minimum number of atoms which is which supports the droplet. So this is what 
but we will see uh, at this movie. Again, sorry, again, some nice movies, but because probably, oh yeah, now we see that they start to, they should start to approach each other. And they repeat slightly, which is not visible, but it is so. You have to believe me. I don't know where I have this beautiful movie. I mean, this one. I want this is the this is the end. But I have problems with showing the movie because when it is, I am running out of time. Maybe this is oh. yes, yes. This is the spectacular movie when one droplet took all atoms from the other on a distance. And I want to show. At the end, that this is very difficult to observe an experiment because it needs a lot of time, long living droplet, which is still a challenging experiment. However, we can find that these things of processes were observed in nuclear physics, such droplets, two component droplets, are quite similar to nucleus, where we have protons and neutrons, which are superfluid to the nucleus. So, in the collision of two such nucleus, uh, people observed some coherent transfer of two neutrons from one to the other, and this is this is very nice commentary paper uh, of Professor Nagelski from from Technical Nagelski from Technical University uh, uh, entitled "The Tenth Superfluid Circuit in Nature." It's really amazing that such two nuclei that they have some. In single realization relative phase, these two superfluids which are forming the nuclear, and when this in the collision of such a nucleus, such coherent transfer was observed. So, so we were very happy when we found this paper because we realized that our explanation of this possible scenario of, of collisions is, is, is really realistic. So, so far, I apologize for this mess at the end that they couldn't handle somehow the movies. Uh, anyway, they are nice and spectacular, and I want to thank you for your attention.